Hey everybody, um, I came wanted to come on tonight and talk to you guys and show you a few things that I've been working on, um, and then how I buy a few of my clearance items when I get them. I just thought this would be a, a nice little different kind of video that I could uh, interact with you guys and talk with you, so this is really just like a little chit chat and uh, let you know what I'm working on and see if... Um, you all like it and if there's anything you'd like to see a process video on or a craft with me coming up this week um, it is my hopes that I can start to get my videos out on Monday Wednesdays and Fridays I'm obviously a very new um, youtuber um, but I just really love mixed media art in all forms and I thought that I could share some of my little neat little things that I've gotten over the past couple of weeks and how I got them um, one of the first things I want to show you is my husband and I are auctioneers. Uh, we live in Kentucky. It's just, it's, it's one of those things I think that you either love auctions or you don't. And he and I bonded over auctions a, a long time ago. That's how we met. And um, so we still go to auctions. We used to have our own business and stuff, but now we're going to semi-retire. And I went to one of my really good friends auction on Saturday. She's finally gotten to open back up. Um, due to the virus and stuff, so we were really glad to get back there and see our friends. But I got two really, really neat things there at auction this week, and I wanted to show them to you. This box right here was one of the auction items that was put up. It's a really nice little box to keep things in, but it's obviously a big jewelry um, bin full of jewelry. So, of course, you know, it was just as soon as I saw it, I whispered in my husband's ear. I was like, I've got a bid on this one, honey. And uh, so I was really excited. But you can see it is absolutely full of all kinds of jewelry, all kinds of knickknacks, all kinds of, like, really nice. And of course, it's uh, costume jewelry and stuff that I can just, my mind is going kind of crazy over all the bohemian things that I can do with it and I'll probably go through each piece individually. I'll look it all over and um, decide if I want to actually take it apart or I can use it in whole. Um, I, I thought this was extremely beautiful, which um, something else I'll tell you about myself. Um, I am Native American. Um, uh, my family is Cherokee on my father's side, and I found this in there. I didn't even see this when I was trying to find it, but isn't that gorgeous? Let's look how beautiful that is. That's just, you know, I just, I just love that. I don't know, you know, I could do a closure or, um, gosh, a focal point. I mean, we can, we can do all kinds of stuff that, or I can keep it where it's actually displayed as a, a, a ring. If you <laughs> want to see how it is. Oh, that's interesting. See, in an auction, you'll find things, but look down in there. Look at there. I didn't even see that. There's a little bottle that somebody's put <laughs> a bunch of little bitty little keepsakes in. Isn't that cute? Just something else that's hidden down in an auction. You never know what you're going to get. I think that's our love of auctions. We just, we get so excited digging through boxes and you never know. So I won this item here with the jewelry in it for $10. If you can believe that. I could I just knew, I just knew I was going to have to pay more. I thought maybe I would go up to 20 and then stop because that's about my budget and what I can do with it. But um, yeah, isn't that pretty? That pretty, and then the little little thing down in there. I mean, you just never know what you're gonna find. So of course, I haven't even dug through this whole thing, and and it's hard telling what I'll find when I'm finished. But we'll do some projects with this and tear it apart, and I'll show you some closures and different things that we can do with all that stuff. So that was a ten dollar find. That was in it too, and you know, just something extra that was on top of the box. So that was one of my favorite finds and then my other big find from the auction uh, Saturday night this was in a box lot <clears throat> now you can imagine this was all folded up it was all folded up right on top and that's why I saw it um, I've been using I, I have a real guillotine it's down in one of my craft buildings but it's kind of rusted out it's one of those really old industrial heavy ones so, of course, I've been using my um, Westcott that I've had for, gosh, three or four years. And, um, and it works great and in the concept of in a small space when I'm working and stuff. But when I saw this baby, I knew I had to, um, I'm so sorry, I'm shaking the camera. I knew I had to bid on this item. It was like I said, it was in a box lot. You bid on the box. 
you get to take your choice. So there was like 20 boxes around. Um, but I knew this one was in the top of it. And of course, I'd take my chances. I didn't know if the blade was there. You can't really nitpick through the boxes too much. It's kind of fast. You kind of see what you see. But it looked like it was in great condition to me. I mean, this might, might be just a little dusty, but it is like, guys, it's in beautiful shape. It's a Pembroke 2-in-1 paper trimmer. Now, over here, I haven't even figured it all out yet, but if you, you can see this right here, it looks like it might cut in other um, things other than a straight line. Now, I don't know that for sure. Maybe you can buy an accessory for it, whatever. But, you know, I bought it as is, where it is. And, um, like I said, I looked at the back of it. I was able to get that one, that two-in-one paper trimmer, um, Pembroke. I mean, I looked it up. It values, I think, something around $30, $35. But this was in a box lot, and it had a whole bunch of other stuff in it. I haven't really gone through that box the rest of the way. Um, I got um, I, some glassware, but there was a book, and I, I didn't pull the book out. I'll show it on a next one. But it's a reproduction book of someone's birthday of all the newspaper headlines from the date of their birth. And I just found that really interesting. I didn't know that was in the box when I got it. Um, so my husband found that in the box and said, look, you're going to really love this. And so I have a lot of ideas about that, and I'll try to find that book. So that box lot, I bid on it, and I got that for $17. So I got that paper trimmer in almost like new, brand new condition. It does cut paper. It cuts up to like 20 pages at a time, which, you know, I was so excited. So those were my two great auction finds this week um, in my mixed media world. And it just, oh, it just made me so happy. And... Um, my husband tries to help find me stuff and look out for stuff, too. And he's been in the auction business for many, many years, uh, about 25 years with uh, um, charity auctions and so forth and farming and equipment auctions. And um, so it's, it's fun to go do something together and get back with our friends and, and, and look for the things that you might be able to use, reuse, repurpose. I wanted to show you some things that I was working on the past couple of weeks and that I'd like to bring to my channel and do with you guys and Maybe do a craft with me in a chat. Of course, I've been working on some ruffles. I'll show you a couple of them. I won't show them all to you. But I just love ruffles. I buy all my stuff on clearance, guys. I, um, I just love those. I make them ahead of time. I'm trying to learn how to mass make like Tina at Shabby Dabby Doodah is teaching. She's got a great series on that. She's been doing that for all last year, I believe, most of it. So I've been trying to take that and uh, try to do a few things ahead of time because I do find myself, it's harder, I think, for me anyway, starting the journal and then trying to do each piece individually how you want it. But if you do some things in different areas that you like and you know that you've got them there, you can kind of pick through your bucket and add to it. And it just it makes a whole other layer to the element for me. So, of course, I've been working on some ruffles, and we've got several there in the bag done, different colors, and I think I've told you all before, I'm very bohemian, I'm very whimsical, I love colors, I love tie-dye, I'm sort of an old hippie, if you want to say, I uh, used to be in the Grateful Dead a lot, when I, I loved that back in the day, um, so I love vibrant colors, whimsical, bohemian but I also have a great love for shabby chic and vintage and um, just the beautiful laces. I, I find beauty in, in so very much. There's there's not a whole lot that I can't appreciate on some level. So um, some other things I wanted to show you in my little bucket that I was working on the other day. Um, <clears throat> of course, I've been doing some tissue paper flowers. And I've been watching uh, Betsy Doodle do these. She's one of my very favorite YouTubers. Um, if you haven't checked her page out, she's great. Anybody that I mention in this, I'm going to try to put the link to their page so that you can find them. I've been watching for a long time and been crafting in mixed media for many years. And I finally decided that I wanted to do some things um, on YouTube and join the crowd. And y'all have such a wonderful, uh, beautiful community that I, I really wanted to be a part of that. So that's why I've gotten started. And I've also been making some of these feathers. These are so cute, you guys. Um, I'm trying to remember the girl's name that I saw when I first went down the rabbit hole looking at these feathers. 
they've been around for a while now. People have been making these for a while. None of this is new. It's just what I've been working on in my take. But Betsy Doodle had some feathers that I was looking at in one of her old videos, too. So this one's made out of fabric here. This one's made out of paper that I, like Betsy uh, Doodle or D would say, painty papers. And then I, I gave it some accents. Um, here's one that I put some embellishments, some little feminine embellishments on. Sorry, I think I got a wisp of a piece of a feather or hair there. Um, but these are just, guys, these just turned out so pretty. I could just, I haven't been doing these in my junk journals, and I cannot wait to incorporate them into that um, neat look and put glitter on some. There's a bigger one. So, I just love those. Those are so pretty. So, those are what I've been working on the past couple of days when I've been watching YouTube videos and catching up with you guys. There's another one that I did with some glitter. So, so fun, easy, and fast to make and, and let you kind of just get some stress out and things so I showed you my auction finds and what I've been working on I will show you these <clears throat> I'll show you these two journals first I've been deciding what journal I want to do next and working on and I, I need to complete one all the way of course we all get into that we want to start 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 <laughs> I don't know I get I get stuck and I'm like a squirrel squirrel where is it at and um so I got to watching um uh, Amy at Crafty Cat. She's one of my favorite ones, too. I've been watching her for a long time. She has some really great videos. Uh, you should check her out, too. But she recently, in the last couple weeks or last week, she did a patchwork cover. So I decided to pull my um, patchworks out and make a cover. And I'm not sure if she did it on paper or how she sewed it exactly but I'll tell you somebody else I also been watching do it and she does it um, a little differently as well but same patchwork is um, Daisy from Tsunami Rose she's again another one of my very very favorites I watch these girls all the time and really appreciate their talents but um, I'll put their links below to their channels and if I, I'll find those specific ones and let you look at them this one, I have not done the um, pamphlet stitch in it or anything. I'm still deciding on how I want to do that. But I'll just take this cover off. I did do the papers inside. These are my painty paper. My, my, I tie-dye my papers, so to speak. I, I dye them with rent dyes. And, of course, I'm doing a lot of the bohemian and then my coffee dye. But I love it when I mix them together and lay them besides each other. Um, they really make these really neat techniques you can see where some of the blue picks up from the last time the purple the teal and it's just it's so pretty like this is laid on a piece of um like a grilling pad that would go on a turkey cooker that's the um little creases underneath of that and i just that adds so much texture and neat definition i love that so here's this journal that i did this is on a mailer guys it's like a mailer you would get from Amazon or something. It's got the crinkly bubbles in it. So I cut it down to one size and I just folded it over and it's this one happened to be an eight and a half by eleven, uh pretty much a true uh A4, so to speak. And all I did was take it on one side and uh I did the patchwork on my um I put my patchwork together on the table how I wanted it to lay out and then I sewed it onto that side of the mailer. So that's what it ended up looking like when it was done on the front and the back. Isn't that pretty? And then this is a vintage little, um, it's vintage. It's really old. It's not very brittle, but you can just tell it smells old. It is old. I found that in an auction box a long time ago. Had them for years, and I decided, oh, that's going to look really good as a little focal point on that front of that cover. So I incorporated some of the pinks and the roses from a little bit of scrap paper I had around. And then all of these are my uh, true tie-dye papers that I do here. And I really need to get some of those up on um, Etsy. I know some people were interested in them. They are so fun to do. But if you don't have the time to do them, I do make them in all kinds of stuff. Graph paper, um, book pages. Um, you know what's really fun too? I don't have one in this one. I might in the other one is crossword puzzles. We've got the words that just creates an element. This is some of that scrap paper for the inside of the cover. It's actual paper that I, I sewed on the back as a patchwork itself, too. So just to kind of carry the theme on. So I'm just super excited. This is some thrifting. 
a, a piece of thrifting fabric that I found at the thrift store probably for $1.99. And guys, this was huge. It was a huge piece of this sort of material. And I just cut it apart and I make ties out of it or, you know, whatever uh, project that I'm working on. And when you tie it up, I'll tie it really fast. I have a couple more things to show you. It just looks so pretty. It just looks like it was meant to be there. I swear. I just love it. But, you know, it's just, it's beautiful. And it can wrap around. It's got room to grow. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's one of the patchworks. And then this is another patchwork that I've done quite a bit of work on already. Again, another piece of fabric found at a thrift store for $1.99. It was huge. I'm talking, these were like four and five yards a piece, guys. So I took some regular lace and just sewed over top of it. Kind of did a little tie. And I wrap it around like a belt, and it just makes it look so good together. This is a little flower embellishment I did with some denim and some more lace, a button. Um, and then I attached it. Again, these aren't put in just yet. I'll show you a few of these pages that I have done real quick. But you can see the patchwork on this one. It just ended up so pretty. Vintage. A lot of these are vintage. I get them at flea markets, auctions, yard sales. Like, I have so much fabric. I honestly, I would say 15% of the time is the only time I will ever spend full price on anything. Part of this journey is the thrill of the hunt for me because of the auctioneer and me and stuff. So, you just never know what you'll find. And you find some of the neatest things that you just, you weren't necessarily looking for, but they just happen across your way. It's, it's really awesome. So, there I did some bigger ruffles to try to accent this. Paper again that I stamped on with a little stamp and my distress inks and then I made this little focal point here I stamped an image onto some muslin and then sewed it around I just thought that looked really pretty with it this is all a combination again of old book pages this is a Helen Steiner Rice out of a Helen Steiner Rice book she's got some beautiful artistry in her books and um, here's some of these feathers I've been making here's the little gold one it's so pretty little bitty one um, so my tied, my papers that I dye, a um, little ruffle tuck there, a little tuck here with some ruffles. I'm going to go through this fast because I really just wanted this to be a chat with me. I made my own little magnet here. Um, that would be a really good video, I think, to show you guys how I made this magnet out of some Dollar Tree magnet sheets. That's all it took. And I got two big sheets out of it. And see, it just my, it, it sticks to itself there. And... It is just, it adds just something so pretty. But I sew on my pages. I try to put a little bit of everything on there. I've got corner, um, corner spots. These corner spots I watched and learned and adapted from a concept from Pink Odd Bird. She's really good too. Again, she's one of my favorites. I have about 10 or 15 girls that I watch. They're just phenomenal. I just, I can't praise them enough. There's a belly band, um, another tech spot. See how that see how that blends in those colors, what I removed from the last batch, put on and I oven dry my papers and see how it just seeps in and it makes it own designs. I just love those. There's a paper ruffle. Um, coloring pages are great to put in your books to add some definition and contrast. Some more of that paper how it just I didn't plan this, it just turned out that way. And this is a stamp with some distress sprays from a stencil. Um, just all kinds of really neat things there, guys. Um, and then, I'm, I'm not sure. I think this has 22 pages in it, so it would have about 86 altogether. Um, I did a little patchwork piece there on that sheet. And then, um, finished it up. And there's, it's going to be one signature, about 84 sheets. And then this enclosure will go back around that. And it just looks like it was, you know, wasn't necessarily planned, but as the path went, went on, it's how, kind of how I pulled it together. I'd love to hear if y'all like that or if you like how it went together. And we'll do some more things in that one. Then I got to wa watch an, um, Pink Odd Bird when she was, I was going back through some of her old stuff when I was just having a crafting day for me. And this is what I want to do for my next journal cover coming up. These... All of these are those scrappy little bits that you pick up, threads, little little bitty pieces of, of stuff you really don't want to throw away, but you've got them there and you're like, what in the world am I going to do with that mess? This is tulle. All this is is a piece of white tulle. You can see it right there at the top. 
you cut you out a piece big enough and I fill half of it. And I try to put something underneath where it helps me see through the tall. And then I just add this stuff in there and cover it up and put my other piece of tall over it. And then you just sew. You just sew all kinds of lines and dimensions over it. No rhyme or reason. I wish you all could feel this stuff. It feels amazing. Like it is strong, sturdy. It is not going anywhere. And it is, it is just beautiful. It is... This right here is the true bohemian nature in me, and I, I love it. Um, I cut a little heart out for maybe a Valentine's thing coming up. I thought that was cute out of some of it. I just, honestly, I I had a little piece of it, and I just, you know, cut around it, like with scissors. And then I got that, and then I, I went back with my sewing machine and outlined the definition of the heart with the blue thread. Here's two smaller pieces I pieced together. Just You can do these as a patchwork if you didn't feel comfortable doing the big piece like this. You can do them in smaller pieces and do it a patchwork like we did that cover. And that just see. And this, this piece was just in my scrap bag. Again, I stamped that on a piece of muslin. Didn't know what I was going to do with it, so I just set it on top of all of the thread and the little bits and made it a little focal point there in that square. And here's another one that I did. And it's got, I've got even a piece of, of lace from a dress here that I got from a thrift store. So again, just kind of like the Franken stitches, so to speak, what they call them. You see how that's a big old just blob of thread that's in there, but it's sewn over and it looks like it's part of it. These are so neat, guys. Maybe we can work with these and do a video if you all are interested. Um, so those are the journals I'm working on. The last little bit I wanted to show you for this video I'm just trying to give you, I keep telling you all, I, I thrift and I look for sales. Very rarely, I'll save my money up once every three or four months and use the coupon and buy me something, you know, that, that I've been wanting on my wish list, but I use the 50% or the 25% coupon at Michael's. It's usually Hobby Lobby right now has the best one. Um, so I used my 50% to this time on this thing, but everything else I got was clearance. Everything. It was marked down, clearance, something. I used my 50% coupon on a new set of Distress Inks from Ranger. Well, yeah, from Tim Holtz Ranger. And this one was the Abandoned Coral, the Aged Mahogany. I think there's Rusty Hinge. There's five of them. I've cleaned my room since. I don't know where I put them in my bucket. But I got those five. The normal price on those was $10.99. And I, so I got them for $5.50 with my coupon. So I got each one of these for like $1.15 each with the five pack. That's why I try to tell you, put it on your wish list, use your coupon, but go, I went in knowing, yeah, I have three or four things I want on my wish list, but my coupon's only going to do one. So what do I want today? And then find what goodies I can find in the clearance bins. And here's some of the things I found. Here's some more tall that I can use for those covers or for anything. It can go behind little embellishments, little clusters. Um, you can put them on covers. I mean, a million ways, right guys? Again, some pink tall. And you can see, this is why I do this. Because look at the price. You know, who? we don't really need two and three yards of this stuff, right? Unless we're making clothes or things like that. We like little bits and pieces that we can pull from as our imagination fuels us. So the normal price on this, for and it's a yard and a half. It's a pretty big one. It does say it has some small holes in it, but it's not going to be an issue at all. $1.93, but in the clearance bin, I got it for $0.69. Cents. This will last me forever, guys. I'll make so much out of that. Um, and then the pink, again, it was marked down to $0.41, cents and it's a half a yard. That's still a lot for $0.41. Cents. This is how I get my little bits and bobs of laces and stuff, too. This is a navy ribbon, two and a half yards. It was marked down to a dollar. I mean, two and a half yards. It's going to, you know, I make wreaths and I make all kinds of stuff. So it's endless what I could do with that. This is a beautiful piece of wide lace trim, one yard. Look at that. The normal price was $7.99 a yard, and I got it for $3.19. And that, a yard of that, guys, on tags, clusters, embellishments, will last forever. And it can be dyed to any color that you really want it to if white wouldn't work for you at that time. This one was just a little bitty piece. But it sure would add some texture to a nice little tag. I think this one I got for nine cents. And it was 24 cents. And it's, you know, it was originally a half, it, it's just a half an inch, but it's really like three inches is what's in there. So that's cool. Here's another piece of trim. Was originally 6.11. I got it for $2.45. Um, 
Um, it says it's seven eighths of a yard, almost a full yard, but look at that. You see, it can be cut into sections. It can be used as a skirt. It can be used as fringe. I mean, I've got all kinds of ideas on that. Um, let's see here. We've got a black floral trim, was nine something. I've got it at 33 inches, just about three quarters of a yard for $3.66. But I just wish you could see that, that you probably won't be able to see it. But look at all that beautiful beading work in there, guys. That's just, it's absolutely beautiful. And that will last forever on different projects. Um, I always check out the jewelry sections too. And like I say, I never get anything unless it's on the ad sale or I have in the clearance bin or I have the coupon for my one item. Um, these I got over in the clearance section with all the laces is your beautiful fabrics. Look at the sheer. This is a sheer um, seasonal floral. Oh, that's beautiful, guys. Look at those colors. This, almost a whole yard, 58 inches in width, $7.86 normally. I got it for $2.82. I mean, that's the only way I'll buy this stuff, guys, and that will last forever. I bet you could make, if you just did journal covers alone, you'd make, goodness, depending on the size, 10 good journals at least. Um, this one has all the florals and the teacups. I just love this. This is cotton. Again, almost a yard, 7 eighths. It was 7 86 This one was a little more pricey, but I've been eyeballing this one because it's so beautiful. It's got all the teacups and the florals. Here's my bohemian side. Got that tie-dye going on. Two-thirds of a yard, cotton, down to two seventy-six. And then here's another piece of muslin, sheer mist. I, you never turn away muslin if you can get it clearance. Muslin has got to be a staple in your mixed media and junk journal projects, guys. You know how much we use that. Like, it's on your desk all the time. So, 45 inches, about a little over half of a yard for a dollar fifty-eight. That's great. Um... The other thing that was over in the bin was these buttons. I don't really know what I'll do with these buttons. They were normally $2.99. I got them for $0.69 because one of them is missing. But they can be used as charms. They can dangle. We can put them on a cover. We can put them on a belly band. I mean, again, so much stuff we can do with that, guys. I'm a jewelry maker as well. Again, mixed media art is my love. I found these. I have no idea what I'll do with them. I can make a closure on a journal I can actually make a watch I can make a bracelet but I got these and look at how much these were guys normally $11.99 up there on the real price $11.99 these were in the clearance bin for 47 cents each and there's a good amount there it, it goes around your wrist twice so that was the last two of them I got both of them I love the glitter I mean we could put these on all kinds of things um, I'm, I like to share these with you because Honestly, if you'll just look around, sometimes it's hard to take the time to look around and see what you can dig around in that bin. The last thing I got at the store, which was on my wish list, and it was an extraneous thing, but I've been saving for it, and it was on a 50% off clearance. Everything that on Accord had at Hobby Lobby was half off. So, like, this was $6.99. Normally, I got it for $3.50. It's waxed hemp cord that I can use. I do beading and weaving for my Native American arts. And then all of the check glass beads that I would use for something like that. Guys, these, these can be expensive. $3 each. And I got them for $1.50 each on that sale that day. So um, I, think my, I think I ended up getting $125 worth of merchandise. There's a few things in here I didn't include because I don't really know where I put them. But were other related to like my wreaths and uh, ribbons and stuff. I think I got like $125 worth of stuff for like $64. And it, it, I think it was a little more than, less than that. It may have been more like $54. I got all this stuff. So, and again, I haven't shopped since three or four months. I save my money and I go in with my budget and I know what I'm allowed to spend and I make my picks and I get my one regular item. So, I just want to make sure I showed you everything. Um, I'll show you those as I go through now. I, I've been wanting to do some different type of videos with you and and show you some of my experiences and how I gather my thing. I've told you before, you're never going to gather all of your stuff overnight. You're never going to be able to... Don't stress yourself out over it, okay? That's, that's just stress. Kind of, if you, you're really into this, kind of look at it as a journey and what you can find at each stop, a yard sale, a flea market, 
auctions if you're into them. If you've always wondered about them, go check one out. They're fun. You, you know, hey, you don't have to buy anything. Maybe you just want to look around and see what they've got and see how it works. I, I think it's so fun. Um, look in your clearance bins, your Hobby Lobbies, your Michaels, and they don't have it just one spot at the store. They have them all over, okay? So you'll have one in the paper aisle, you have one over in the yarn aisle, blah, blah, blah. They could just be anywhere. So um, I just wanted to show you those few things, and I hope that you enjoyed that. Leave me your comments. Message me. Ask me anything. Um, let me know your YouTube. I'd love to follow you back and, and be friends. And... Um, Monday, Wednesday, Friday this week, I'm going to start to turn out my videos, um, and um, I've got several little ideas. We can work on some of those magnets, the fabric um, covers, and I will include the links to Crafty Cat, Amy, um, Shabby Dabby Doo Doll Tina, Betsy Doodle Dee Dee, and um, Pink Oddbird. She's wonderful. And there's another girl I was watching on the um, feathers, and I'll try to find her and put her down there, too. So, um, I appreciate you guys being with me tonight. It was really good to talk with you. I look forward to talking to you again this week and happy crafting. Bye.